Welcome to part two of how to 3D model in Vectric Aspire. Today's video we're going to be making this 3D model of a gorilla based off an image. I'll go into detail on how to set up your document, create the vectors, and 3D sculpt. And just a disclaimer, I'm not an artist and you don't have to be either to create wonderful 3D models in Vectric Aspire. It makes it pretty easy once you know the tools. So we're going to start by getting the image that I used and I'll have a link in the description below. You can find it there. Make sure you get the highest resolution image you can when you're modeling. So we're going to create a new file in Aspire and we'll make it uh, 12 by 19 by one inch thickness. Now you can make this whatever size you want, but this is the size that I chose. So once you finish doing that, you're gonna go and open the image that you just downloaded. I'm gonna resize it. And you'll see that uh, that's a little bit too big a document for that size image. So I'll just change the document size to 18 which you can look down in the bottom there and you'll see that the image is 18 inches high. We'll just resize the height and we're good to go. So now we'll just go in and start creating some layers and renaming the bitmap the gorilla to this gorilla and then we'll start making our layers for the body parts we'll just make one for each body part that we're going to make a component for you can change the color of the line if you'd like just so you can see the different vector lines clearly now we'll just zoom in on the head, get a little closer, and we'll start drawing our first vector, which would be the body. So we're going to pick the draw line tool, and we're just going to start at some point along the head, and we'll just start making our first vector for our first component. And this will be the silhouette of the whole body of the gorilla. You don't have to be too fancy in this part. Just clicking a new node every time the line direction changes. You can go in and node edit and get it exactly the way you want after you're done connecting up the line. So I'll just speed this up so you get the idea. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect on the first go around because you're going to edit the nodes and get them the way you want them by inserting a node or deleting a node and moving it as you need to. So once you've finished that line up and connected it, you're good to go. Now I made a mistake there and I put the that on the actual bitmap layer so we want everything to be on its own layer so we'll rename that to gorilla bitmap and we'll select the line and we will move that to the body layer. And once we've done that we will go to dual view 3D create a new component with the line selected, hit apply. We're going to do a dome shape for most of these items. And we'll just adjust the settings till we have it where we like it. Adjust the angle. And the base height. And you just got to play that by ear and see how you like your model to look. 
you don't want to make it too thick because you're going to be adding more components on there and they're going to add up in size pretty quick. So once you finish that, you're going to go on back to the 2D view and you're going to work on your further layers. I'll start with the head shape. So for this I'm going to choose the Create Arc Tool. There's lots of different ways you can do this. In most cases you're going to use the Line Tool. But there's no wrong way to do it. Whatever works best for you. You're just going to connect up all these arcs until you get the shape that you want. I'm just going to speed that up. And you'll keep creating the arcs, connecting them. Make sure you click on each dot. And we'll switch to a line tool here. And then once we're done connecting those, we'll have to select each section and join them together. Okay, so once you have them all joined together, you're going to want to go into node editing mode. You just select the line and hit N. Then you're going to go in, insert or remove any nodes you need to, select them, and use your arrow keys once they're in red to move it where you wanted to move it. It's fine tuning your line. until you get it where you want it. Okay, so once you've done that, you're going to go into dual view mode, 3D and 2D, so you can see what you're doing again. And we're going to make a new component from that vector. So we'll go to modeling, create a new component, hit apply, so we can see what we're working with. And we're just going to fine tune the base height and the angle until we get it to look the way we want. Now don't forget that we have a rough edges on these right now, but we'll go in and sculpt them and smooth them out with the sculpting tools. So once you have it the way you like it, you always make sure to hit apply. And we can close that out. Now we're going to click on the image. And we're going to make a skin from that image. And that'll just give us some detail. So we know what we're working with. So you just go up to create component from a bitmap. Once you have the image selected. And that'll show you. Now that's, that's way too detailed. That would take forever to carve. But you'll just get an idea of how your model's starting to look with the rough edges. Now what we'll do is we'll go in and smooth that image out and it'll take away a lot of the detail so it'll be easier to carve. But first let's go in and just start creating some more vectors and components. We'll uncheck that and we'll just name each layer. So hopefully by now you're getting an idea how this works for each component. They're very similar to each. You're either indenting or extruding the component, getting the shape you want. So let's just zoom through this quickly and then we'll get on to the sculpting.
So now we're going to smooth out the skin. We're going to take some of the detail out so it'll be quicker to carve it out on the machine. So we're going to select the Gorilla image and we're going to smooth it. And we'll just uh, preserve the transparency and just move the slider over to the right until you can still see some detail, but not so much that uh, you're going to take forever to carve it. And we'll fine tune this as we go, to, as this layer is a separate component. And in that case, we can edit it as we like. <laughs> So now we'll start our 3D sculpting. So you're going to want to select all the components that you want to sculpt onto. You start with the first, hit shift, and hit the last one. And then we'll go up and hit the sculpting button. And it's going to ask you to bake the components. So you're going to have them all together as you're sculpting. All right, so we're going to start by smoothing. That's number one on your keyboard. You want to use your keyboard shortcuts. And uh, first uh, you hit six and you can adjust the model around. And then you just pick your diameter and strength and smoothness and you just start smoothing the edges. And your cursor will follow around the curves of the model. And we'll just smooth all the edges, all the hard edges, until we get the model to look more like it's one piece instead of several Put together pieces and while i'm doing this i'll go over the different buttons that you have up top they're all numbered on from your keyboard from one till six your first one is your smoothing one that we're using now your second one is a smudge tool that allows you to pull and push the model around the third one is the add material tool you're going to add material to your model then you can adjust it with the other tools. And your fourth one is remove material. And then the fifth one is remove any mistakes. So you can correct any of your mistakes that you made by going over it with the brush and hit holding down the space bar. 
And the number six tool is your movement tool. It's the twiddle view. So you won't be able to move around your model like you will normally if that feature isn't clicked. So we'll just want to adjust our brush size and the strength as you get into smaller details. And you just follow around the curves and your brush will automatically adjust in size if there's an edge to follow. And if you make a mistake, you can always undo it. And once you're happy with a certain amount of the modeling that you've done, you're going to go down to the keep button down at the bottom. And if you're unhappy with what you've done, you can hit the discard button. There, I made a mistake, so we're just going to un undo that. Or you can hit Control Z on your keyboard. And this can be the most time consuming part of making your 3D model. Just getting the sculpting right and the way you want it to look. Take your time. It could take several hours depending on the complexity of the model. So if you're happy with the progress you made up to this point, you can hit keep and OK. And we'll check our skin on the model to see how it's looking. So let's go and check the skin. Now we'll adjust the skin again. Like I said, this is not the final look we're going to be going for. We're going to tone that down quite a bit, a little bit more smoothing, maybe lower it. You can see it's a little bit high up on the model. We can adjust that component separately. And lower its height. But as you can see, the smoothing has made it look much more natural. Now you can spend as much time or as little as you want on this process. This is where you can get artistic and creative. This uh, video is more a demonstration on how the tools work 
and you can use your imagination and creativity to create your own 3D models. So now we'll go in and we'll do the adjusting on that skin. You can lower the shape height. You go all the way down, it's not going to be hardly visible at all. And you can adjust the base height. And you can just fine tune that until it looks the way you want. Just remembering the more detail, the harder it's going to be to carve. And the smaller bits you're going to have to use. Okay, so now we're going to go back into the 3D sculpting. We'll just finish up naming our components, selecting them all, and going to the 3D sculpting button. And it'll ask you to bake the components. So we'll adjust the model using the twiddle view. And we'll get it to where we can work on the face. We're going to work on the eyes and the eyelids and the nose.
So you're just going to want to use your add material tool, which is number three on your keyboard. And you're going to set your diameter to a small amount and your strength to about medium, smoothness to about medium. And you're just going to start adding some material around the eyes for the eyelids. Now there's several ways of doing this, but this is the way I chose for this model. Now this is the part of the process that can take a long time until you get it right. Going in and changing things as you keep using the reference picture. Have it nice and close, either on a separate monitor or printed out on a piece of paper where you can go in and see the details and adjust them as needed. In this case, remembering that you have your skin that can add a lot of the details too. So you don't have to get too crazy on the details, but if you didn't want to use the skin, you could uh, just do all the details yourself. So like I said, you could spend several hours adjusting this model. So I cropped the photo and I also adjusted the document size, added some leaves, finished the tree and fine tuned the model some more. 
until I got it the way I wanted it to look. The more you work on it, the better you'll get at it. It takes time. It's not a quick process. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, I ask you to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know that you did. And if you have any requests for videos or any questions at all, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.